This video is sponsored by Decal Works, offering 10% off all graphics to retail customers. Use the promo code RX10 at decalmx.com to receive 10% off your graphics. Hey everybody, welcome to another racerxonline.com garage build. And you're looking at a 2023 Yamaha YZ450F. To the left of me is Jamie Ellis from Twisted Development. It's no surprise that I love to ride a Yamaha on my own time when I go do races here locally in Southern California. I choose a YZ450F just because it's easiest for me to go fast on in a quick manner. Like, I don't have to do much to it. But, enter Jamie to kind of blow that all out of the water here today. So, Jamie purchased this bike himself. And with this specific garage build, this is more engine based. Uh, in the future, we will have a more chassis based 23 YZ450F garage build, but for this one I wanted to focus on the motor and why you guys out there would even want to do anything to your engine when you buy a, a $10,000 motorcycle. So Jamie, give us some information on what you did and the why. Okay, so as you are aware, acutely aware that the 23 YZ450 is an amazing machine in stock trim. Yep. Um, and for most mortals, it's, it's going to be plenty enough power responses there, handling's there, everything's good. Uh, what we do is, is we try to maximize whatever is there. Like whatever we get from Yamaha, we are gonna go in and we are gonna massage around and gonna do and, and develop things. Obviously, you know, at the local level, most vet dudes, this thing's probably perfect. Plenty fast enough and a lot of times we even will slow it down for some of the hot rod pro kids like you probably learned last weekend. Yeah. Brad West. Yeah. So, um, so the, the process is the same no matter what we're doing, right? Like whether there's a need for that or not, we're still going to develop a high level package to make sure we know where the high level is. And then we can play around underneath there comfortably without having to worry about if we have enough power or whatever. Like if somebody wants more power, hey, it's right here. So in this specific one, we work with Crankworks. Um, the, Yamaha comes with a plain bearing rod, and what that means, it has no cylindrical rollers in it. So the bearing shells are actually part of the process now. So the stock rod comes that way. So the guys over at Crankworks were able to develop their own high quality, high, you know, steel, amazing connecting rod. So we put that in just about every bike we build. Um, and that's, does that give you any performance advantage or mostly just durability? That's, that's a durability thing okay. for us. Um, you start by building, you know, a good concrete slab for the house and then you can build the foundation right. on that. So, so that's kind of where it starts there just to ensure, not that there's any problems that we're aware of with the stock Yamaha rod, uh, it's just the way that we do it, right? So then we developed our own piston, we work with JE Pistons and we, you know, scan the combustion chamber backwards with a high-end laser. And then at that point, we can kind of build the piston to mate the chamber to, to ensure we're not going to have any clearance issues or anything like that. Um, and then cylinder head work, you know, ported cylinder head. Uh, mm -hmm. We put our own valve seeps in it that, you know, dissipate heat better, a little bit of longevity. Uh, if there's any detonation, they prevent chipping, like just more or less like this is what m the majority of any race package is going to have. And then it actually has your developed hints and clutch in it which you can talk more about than I can. Yep. Uh, I actually stopped at Henson on the way here today to get that installed, so. Just a really exciting bike. It was already good in stock trim. We've made it even better. Um, I'm just really excited about the platform, you know, like anytime there's a new bike, it's our idea to buy that bike, be able to develop it, get it to a point, and then hopefully sell it eventually to get our money back out of it. So uh, this one might be a little bit harder to sell, I'm a big Yamaha guy, uh, 98 YZ125 has hooked me in, Yep. so I would say that um, that this one might be a little bit harder to sell. The guy behind the camera, 1991 Jeff Emig was my favorite Emig, by the way, and that was, oh, yeah. that was a big Yamaha guy back then. But You should uh, ask him what he thinks about that bike. Oh, we're going to get to him later. <laughs> uh, Vortex ECU as well. Yeah. Those are available for this as well. They are available. We have them in stock. Uh, we've developed them on a, on a lot of levels. This is our first mod package, so it has our mod ECU settings in it. Uh, we've also developed the base around the standard bike with a pipe, pump gas. We have all that stuff ready to go, ready to ship. So, um, yeah, so today's more or less like Phil Nicoletti. We did the same thing last year. I brought this fire breathed engine. Uh, Chris was pissed at me all day. I was. And uh, we, we made it manageable through the ECU and had a lot of fun in the process. So I think we're going to do a lot the same today and, and stay tuned to see if we can get this thing rideable. I'm going to go ride this thing right now and a uh, little scared. Jamie always builds me fire breathing engines, but he knows how I am. I like a broad power band, so we're going to try to uh, see what this thing's all about there. 
Glen Helen Raceway today, and we'll be right back to tell you about it. Wrap it up here at Glen Helen Raceway with the Twisted Development YZ450F. Again, chassis is stock, suspension is stock. We got stock bars, stock grips, everything. We're strictly going to talk about the engine and what that can do for you as a new Yamaha consumer. So obviously, 2023 has a new platform. There's plenty of stuff up on my website about it, but we haven't done much engine work. Uh, we massaged some things with mufflers. Uh, we try to get ignition. Now we're on a Vortex ECU. It's the first time I got to experience some of this. And there's a lot of new features within that ECU, plus the engine work that Jamie provided. So, Jamie, give us the rundown on what you did and a little bit about the Vortex. So there's a, a lot of new features with the Vortex, as you mentioned. And um, just to talk about a couple of them, uh, dynamic traction control. So once the bike is running and you tap the starter again, it'll start illuminating a purplish light here and it'll stay consistently blinking so anytime you tap that starter bike starts tap the starter again you're going to get into traction control mode um, and then the, this big blue mode isn't light on light off like the oem ecu is so it, the ecu has 10 settings in it it's the x10 yeah. and if you were going to click to map six and you push the button it'll flash once and if you push the button again, it'll flaps, flash six times right. to let you know what map you're actually utilizing. So you can go between one and whatever map you click on the ECU on the fly here. So that's been a pretty cool feature. And then another thing we didn't talk about earlier is if you hold this thing for long enough, you're right. going to get into launch mode. Right. So there's a lot of uh, built-in user functionality with the bike, with the OEM buttons. So that I think they've done a great job on you know maximizing all of those features right there on the fly. And then another feature that we're working with this year, which is going to be limited to consumer, um, if we develop a new setting for you, is, is gear-based tuning. So we're able to split first and second gear, yep. and we're able to split third, fourth, and fifth gear with the OEM you know, sensors that come on the bike. So that's, why don't you talk a little bit about yep. how the, some of those features felt for you whenever we actually went and tried them. Yeah, so I had a little bit of previous knowledge on another ECU that I tried. This is the first time I had these these actual customizations, I guess, so to speak, between mm -hmm. gears uh, on the Vortex. And for me, with the stock unit, I'll talk about it so you guys understand it, the stock second gear, no matter what Yamaha power tuner map I have, I still seem to feel like it's a little jerky. Either it's too, um, what I call doggy off the bottom, where it's really lethargic feeling, and then it comes on too strong, or it's too touchy, uh, on from zero to 10%. So it's really hard to dial in that area when I'm rolling the corners. What I like about this, and I've you know, had pretty much half the day here to experience all this, second gear is very tunable. I went back and forth with Jamie. I asked for a little bit less. Jamie knows me. I don't like a lot of ton of bottom end on a 450, especially this one. I like it long and linear. So he dumbed it down for me so I could actually feel how low we can go actually as far as excitement and hit. And we went as far as down as where I was like, hey, I need some more. So we went back up. I had good touch, good control, good rear wheel connection. But then what's really cool is Jamie allowed second gear to rev really far. So I didn't have to use third gear going up some of these hills. And maybe in some of the shots that Spencer got, you can see that. Like I could roll second gear and then keep second gear on all the way up to the top versus having to shift to third gear halfway up the hill and then risk wheeling or missing a shift. So that really provides for me um, a racing aspect where it makes me race easier and not have to work as hard. So third gear, we had a little bit of a, there's a lot there, like you can really adjust it. So for me, I used second gear really long and then made third gear more usable for you vet guys out there. If you wanna use third gear in the corners. The magic you, gear, right? Yeah, you can customize that third gear so you can roll the corners in third gear. 
I talked about this a lot in previous Yamaha videos is where the 22 YZ450F was really good in third gear. I could lug it, I could use third gear in corner. This bike wasn't quite like that. Now that we did this with the Vortex and the engine work that he provided, we're back. I can use third gear again. So I have the option to use second gear longer or I'm lazy. I don't feel like downshifting again in the corner so I can use third gear and have the recovery to get me out. So that's the nice part. Yeah. Um, so talk about the piston, obviously um, higher compression or same compression? Yeah, a little bit more compression than stock. Um, just an overall better design that we, that we typically build into our parts. And then in-house head work. In-house head work, yeah. So for me, what you get with a little bit of head work and the piston and the ECU is you're getting a broader, more usable YZ. There's nothing wrong with the stock 23 power. Like I like the YZ450F power, but it could be a lot at times. So for me, broadening that up, customizing the gears that I want to use is something that is really cool that I don't get to spend a lot of time on. So Jamie, you pretty much have that mastered and we've kind of came up with a map that I think most of you guys will like. Um, hopefully we'll call it the Kiefer map that you come. Yeah, it'll be a specialized, uh, it'll be a Kiefer map because one of the functions whenever we switch to the gear based tuning, the gear actually dedicates what map is being selected. So we lose the functionality of the X10 maps and all the different map options we typically provide. So I would say that, um, that's why I said in a limited form, we'll have a mod bike setting and we'll have a stock bike, you know, closer to pump gas, something like that setting. Um, but it'll be very hypersensitive on what we provide and what we're able to get to the customer just because it does, you do lose some functionality. So there is some downside to it, but most of these guys that buy our ECUs are typically putting them on, happy with them, riding them and never switching maps anyway. So for that customer, Look for the Kiefer setting. We'll have it listed special on our website. Um, and, and, and when you buy that setting, it'll be that you want the gear-based function and the cool feature that is you know, a longer second and a, and a more exciting third. And just so you guys know out there, we spent some time, obviously Jamie um, put some air, more airflow through the air box. We actually covered that up and I, I liked a covered air box. For me, I didn't like that initial hit that more air provided. Um, we played with a lot of mapping today. And just so you guys know, just like what Jamie said at the top of this is when you press that button to change the map, if you were in that setting, um, if you press it once, it goes to the different map. Unlike Correct. your Yamaha Power Tuner app where you press it really quick and it shows you what map you're in, this will actually change it. So just know once you hit that button, it'll change the map. And there is a threshold of when you need to be into neutral to access launch mode. Right. So if you're going to hold this button for long enough to get into launch mode, so that's why that feature has to be dedicated to launch mode as well as a map selector in the, the time of the press. And don't forget too, your start button acts like traction control. So right. there's some, a lot of you guys hit me up on my email and say, hey, how do I get traction control? What should I do? Well, your start button pushing that in actually provides you to turn that on or off. Correct. So there's a lot of options for you guys out there. Um, Smart bike. Yeah, right, exactly. So I think a lot of other manufacturers are going that way. You know, the new Kawasaki's coming out and they have an app now where they can be more adjustable. Um, and just for me, it just calms the bike down. This is a little bit more of a rigid bike than 22. So when you have a little bit of motor, you broaden it up and you lengthen all of this, to me, it actually calms the, the whole bike down itself, especially at Glen Helen when you're on the edges of your tires. So I like it. There is some plus side to spend a little bit of money on your engine and it's not just about getting horsepower it's about customizing the power that you want so i think that's where that's where you come yeah in. yeah it's all it's all in the the user interface and the actual i mean on the on the dyno the just putting a little bit of holes in the airbox was a huge gain yeah uh, so we kind of know that whenever you open the airbox on these things they do make quite a bit more power and you want to map them to the fact that they have the more power because anytime you make more power it's going to go lean in that area so just by covering the holes back up we did rich in that area and that was probably another feeling as a byproduct that you actually like yeah so, so if you have any more questions chris at keferinktesting.com i'm happy to help you and uh to guide you and maybe spend your money wisely because that's what i'm here to do so, it's cheaper uh, to kefer <laughs> it's cheaper to kefer that's a good one we like that uh don't forget 12 issues 30 dollars for the racer x publication and uh, we'll be back here with more Garage Build videos next month. See ya.